What's up, everybody? Welcome in. It is the Oz Makers presented by Superbook Sports. Energy is palpable here uh, at the set. I'm going to call it the set. This we do in uh, this realm. Jay Cornegay and uh, John Murray are alongside. Jay, how are you today? Fine. All right, John. Good. We got kind of a late start because Jay was on his phone. <laughs> I was. So we're going to have to kind of move the show along to make up for the time we lost. You guys it, don't want to talk about the Grizzlies or something? <laughs> uh, Jay, we can. Jay was on his phone. It might have snapped at us yeah. to hurry it along. So yeah. well, let's go. Let's go. Let's All right. Divisional round, guys. So um, yes. how'd it go? How'd it go from a division round standpoint? Everybody and their mother, including mine, um, had that teaser, right? And I uh, got to say... Right? That's kind of a smart bet when you can tease your key numbers in a tight game like your that. Mom, your mom bet the teaser? Or yeah. You? She came up with the idea. She bet, your really? mother bet a Chiefs-Eagles teaser. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Good for her. That was a smart bet. Right? Everybody was on it, and uh, it came through. Well, we still had a good day for some yeah. reason. Well, Saturday the week. reason why we had a good day was because the Chiefs didn't cover, right? Okay. Stayed under. Eagles covered, but that stayed under. Mm -hmm. and we were fortunate enough not to have a lot of teasers between those two. So Saturday was a good day. Sunday, not so much. Gave it all back. We needed the Bills to win but not cover. That didn't happen. A lot of uh, money line bets on the Bengals, a lot of point line bets on Buffalo. Uh, loser there. And then um, the late game, I'm pretty much everybody was on San Francisco, except for yeah. Jeremiah. But, yeah. And me. I bet Dallas. Yeah, so there was two. Uh, too, otherwise, too everybody else lone, was on San Francisco. So. Two rogue idiots and betting on Mike McCarthy. Yeah. Jeez. That, was I mean, tough, I, that was a tough one. I feel like that's the one game where you don't throw McCarthy. Well, McCarthy wasn't great, but... No, it wasn't really his fault. I feel like you can look at What else. about this? I'll complain. I'll, I'll complain. I'll try to get everyone to feel bad for us. We got a prop. Will Marr miss an extra point? Oh, yeah. Dallas only scored one touchdown. He only had to convert one PAT attempt, mm -hmm. and he missed. He got blocked. He was going to miss it. That and we, was a, we got crushed. Yeah, that, that was a healthy five-figure loss for a prop. That's oh yeah, kind of big. Can I ask? That's, that's kind of big for us. I'm actually I'm glad you guys brought this up because I did want to ask about that very quickly because that was obviously a hot topic the day of the game. Um, your thought process in putting that up was what? You just knew that was going to be a popular angle, so you wanted to put that up uh, on the market because that was a big talking point heading well, into that game. I think that and part of the discussion centered around the fact that they were playing San Francisco mm -hmm. and there probably wouldn't be a lot of point after attempts, and there was only one. We were right. And he missed. That's what I wanted to complain about. Okay. Well, I mean, it was a hot topic. Everybody was talking about sure. it. I mean, who misses four, you know, extra points? And he, it, it was natural for us to put it up there. But then, you know, when we put up these propositions, we think that, you know, what, what are the Sharps going to play? I mean, the Sharps going to play the no. I mean, right? Right. So minus $7 and looking at what he hit, 94% of his extra points. I mean, 94%. And well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> minus seven dollars to make one of one is a very good bet. Well, you saw it. I mean, he was gonna, I mean, it was technically blocked, but yeah. that thing was going left by oh, 10 absolutely yards. It was, yeah, there it was, was some slow mo shank. footage, Another, he was gonna miss. Oh, yeah, I, was, I thought it was gonna curve back in. <laughs> really? He, right. Why, what are you basing that on? <laughs> <laughs> just I, I, a, a yeah. lot of the times where I see a kick and I go, oh, he missed yeah. it, and then for some reason it just squirts yeah. right back to the right. Okay. I, I thought it was yeah. coming back. So just confidence in Brett Maher's ability to have it scored back. That's right. Oh, screwball. Well, he, he kicked curbing. pretty well the previous week, so I can see where that's. I can see why you'd give him the benefit of the doubt. I go with the 18 week sample size as opposed to the one game. I hear you. That's why we put up the prop, man. Yep. Didn't work out. All right. It's all right. I'm glad you guys put it up though. There were we won't name names, but there was uh there was that put up, but it was a one way market, and yes, it was plus two fifty. So that was really? uh oh yeah, that was why it was a big topic of conversation. Uh, on, Where, the, and the on the social, social media, yeah. in social media, on the web, mm. as they right. say, um, of, uh, social media. A lot of people on social media, not for me, John. No, but, no. You're so active, though. I like to tweet about football. We got to bring this up too. Is it Vaughn or Van? It is. It is oh, Vaughn. Okay. All right. Oh my God! I've been saying Van Tobel for years. Me too. Someone, <laughs> I saw that on TikTok, and uh, I was like, oh, "Shit! Wow!" I <laughs> for uh, actually, you better get it right because for those who don't know, who aren't located out here, Von Tobel's our Vegas royalty. All right, so let's <laughs> let's get that right. So we saw on TikTok where they showed this video of the the play that um, Kittle right. Mm -hmm. Caught that uh, juggling act and the long, caught it like right. Their the only long, long play right. of the game. Right. right. And they said, they looked at the lineup and they, they looked at the line, the offensive line. Kittle was actually covered by, I don't know if it was a running back or a receiver, which made him ineligible, right? And so he shouldn't be able to, first of all, even leave the line of scrimmage 
two, not to mention to go out for a pass. Did you see this clip? No. I don't know if it's true or not, but it, it looked real to me that on that specific play, there was somebody outside covering Kittle, which means Kittle cannot, you know, he's got to stay in and block. He can't leave the line of scrimmage. But he not only does he do that, but he ends up, you know, making the play of the game. Mm -hmm. So That was awesome. Yeah. There, it's out there. You should take a look I, at it. it. It's it's pretty interesting to see. I, I would go look at it. I would also say Kyle Shanahan is such a madman when it comes to the offense that I there's probably some vague rule that he exploited mm -hmm. to get that done. Do you think okay. Mike McCarthy knows the rules well uh, enough to say, "Hey, you can't do this"? Yeah. I don't think that. I feel like I want to take. I feel like I want to defend Mike McCarthy. I know he's he's the he's a low hanging fruit. Hey, I got I got a question. Why? So obviously that was a high profile game, big game, two big yeah, teams. Yeah. Why do people? break their own televisions oh it's a good one after they like i don't like i saw so much of that on on social media this is a tough economy right now yeah. uh, who would break their own tv that's ridiculous i, I really right. want to get into like a play-by-play oh, yeah. of this video because it's an incredible have you well, seen it well there's yeah. the one guy who he breaks like a, a 16 inch it's, it's, it looks like an ipad monitor I guess, I guess he's watching yeah. the game on that tv but he's got it's not only that it's a very yeah. small tv it's probably like 38 inches at most but there clearly is a bunch of people on couches watching said small TV. Right. So, like, it's the smallest TV you can think of. Right. But there's a big group of people watching it. And what looks like a garage, by the way, because there's a water heater in the room. Yeah, I saw that clip. Right. The one with, like, the elevated seating. Yep. And then mm -hmm. he just socked the television. Why would you go to all that trouble and not? You can rent a TV, right? I think you can. can is you there a business? Do I don't know. Is that, is that a booming really, business? I don't know. All right. I, I can only all speak right. for myself. The reason why I did it was because it, it was it wasn't a s smart TV first of all, right. and so I thought so I could just get a new one. It was a that, dumb TV. Yeah. And you just, you right. Well, I did have Dallas Plus Four, but I didn't break any of the TVs. Okay, all right. You lost your butt on that one as we were talking no, about earlier. No, no, it was fine. It Good. is what it You're is. You're probably watching it in my office. I was. Yeah. See. I, I mean, get back it, there. It is what it is. You can't win them all. You can't win them all. I would bet Dallas Plus Four again if they played this week. I don't know from what I saw, <laughs> but I don't. I don't have a lot of confidence in Dak Prescott. Yeah, Dak was getting piled on after the game. Uh, yeah, well, the, the Cowboys' defense played incredible. I mean, they were they were awesome. We move on. The Cowboys don't, but we do. NFC Championship game. Let's start there. 49ers on the road against the Philadelphia Eagles. Current number two and a half. Total of 46 and a half. Uh, this is, I think this is actually, it's pretty fast in the game, one, because these teams are freaking awesome. Uh, but two, because you get a team that some thought maybe in the San Francisco 49ers would be favored on the road here against the Philadelphia Eagles. Not the case. Uh, you guys, I believe, opened up what one and a half here. Yeah, what was, was it? One and a half or yeah. two? I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was one and a half. One and a half quickly to two. Yeah, it, and then it happened the, very. You know, it all happened day, so fast, John. Half. It I don't did. Remember. Yeah, one and a half with a total of forty-five for the opening numbers yeah. at yep. the uh, Super Bowl. Yeah, San Francisco. They, did, they bid it over, right? Yeah, they did over there was, forty-six. That there is. was some real sharp money in Arizona over forty-six in that game, and in uh, the Super Bowl in Arizona, I should say, and. uh San Francisco could have been favored, John. I mean, Philadelphia crushed New York on Saturday night. So, like, whenever people talk about these look-ahead lines for mm -hmm. these games, you got to ask, well, what happens in the previous round? Like, people were talking about this game a few weeks ago saying they thought San Francisco would be favored. Well, they might have been favored if Philadelphia had eked out a win against the Giants on Saturday. But Philadelphia looked so good on Saturday, you had to open them a favor. How much, can I ask, how much did the questions being answered about Jalen Hurts' health help? Right, like there was thoughts that he wasn't fully healthy. Looked relatively mm -hmm. fine yeah. in the game against the New York Giants and Lane Johnson. Yep. So don't forget about that. Too. Lane Johnson, Jalen Hurts, both looked good to go. Now the Giants, how do we put it delicately? Stink. Yeah. I mean, the Giants are not good. Minnesota was not good. So you got to be careful overreacting to that game too much because New York really had no business being in the final eight of the NFL. It, uh, it speaks to Brian Dable and how good of a coach he is. Yeah, he's really good. How he got that team to that point. So where do you think, do we get to, you guys are again, you're at two and a half, minus 110. Does this get to three? Does it get to three alter juice? This thing is moved in Philadelphia's favor already by a point. Does it continue to head in that direction? Do you get to the full field goal? I think it gets to three with the little split line. I yeah. do. I, I just looking at and feeling the way the money's coming in right now. I'm thinking that it's going to bump up to three, probably closer to maybe even Saturday, something like that. Um, but uh, I'm thinking minus three even at best. Mm -hmm. You know, it might even go to three and then come back and then go back uh, back to three again. But uh, I, I know that Philadelphia, for entertainment purposes only, 
are getting majority of the tickets, and I think that majority of the bets that are coming in are in, are in Philadelphia based off that performance against the Giants, and we all know that's fool's goal. But, uh, I mean, looking at it, at that game between the 49ers and Cowboys, that was a real physical game. Mm -hmm. You know, when we talked about all the, you know, opponents that play, you know, after they play San Francisco and what they've done afterwards, I mean, I feel like, you know, San Francisco is going to fall into that category. That was a really yeah. physical, hard-fought game. And Philadelphia seems to be very, very fresh to me. I think, uh, you know what, I think it should be three. Let's put it that way. Okay. And the total, 46 and a half, you mentioned it. Uh, you guys did open up 45, so that's a point and a half move to the over. Uh, ceiling, 46 and a half. Not going to move much, you think, by the time we get to uh, kickoff? I think it creeps up a little bit more. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Not much. These are, the, these are the two best rosters in the NFL, these two teams. The, the AFC teams have these great quarterbacks, but... I think these are the two best rosters in the NFL, John. Well, and this, this is an awesome game. That's reflected in your look at. We'll get to those in detail, but that's reflected in your look at the headlines, right? Because uh, both the 49ers and the Eagles would be favored in uh, both of the matchups that they would face in the Super Bowl. Only by a point, but still by the Superbook numbers. Eagles minus one, both against the Chiefs and the Bengals, and 49ers yeah. minus one against the Chiefs and the Bengals. Right? We are going to be rooting for Philadelphia. So we, we've got a very, very positive uh, futures position on Philadelphia. We always... <laughs> coincidentally have a good futures position on all mm. the Philadelphia teams for some reason. In every sport. In every sport. And we have an excellent position on the Eagles, so we'll be rooting for the Eagles in the first game on Sunday. What about the uh, 49ers and the other two teams, just overall big picture? What's your, uh, what's your worst case scenario? Well, we, we lose on the Niners. Uh, mm -hmm. We lose on the Niners Conference and Super Bowl. So we really... Not a lot, though. No. No. It's not. It's really not bad. It's We really... Uh, Philadelphia KC would be the best case scenario for us in terms of the futures book, um, but it's really it's more so about the NFC game because mm. right? Philadelphia is a big big winner. San Francisco is not a huge loser, but it is a negative number. I'm telling you guys this right now. You'll get good news on Sunday when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles. I'll tell you that. How do you know that, John? Really? It's, it's my that's my prediction. Do you like the Eagles in the game? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think you could be right. Do you I mean, have the final score over there? <laughs> and that's that's for later. My almanac okay. is uh, to make okay. a dated reference. Right. My almanac's back at home. Hmm. I get that. See, I can make that reference. I saw that movie, even though it's a little before my time. <laughs> good. Back very, to the future. Uh, very right. good film. If I had the almanac, if if you had an almanac like that, you would not be doing a show like this. Uh no. Right? Why would you do that? I would be a I would be a dastardly person. I would be Biff. I oh, would. Me too. I would, I would do all sorts of terrible things. It would be great if I could get all that money. Be fantastic. Be awesome. <laughs> Cincinnati, Kansas City. This is so. This is. I am fascinated by this game. I love conversations like this. Superbook right now. Uh, the number for this matchup pick with a total of forty-seven and a half. So as the week has gone along, uh, what was the highest you guys reached in favor of Cincinnati? Did you get all the way up to two and a half? We did. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were there uh, just yesterday morning. So Tuesday morning, we were there for. Well, it was longer than just a few hours. Um, you know, and then. All of a sudden, we did take some very sharp, respected money on Kansas City at plus two and a half, and it's been falling ever since. But uh, and we, we have to be honest here because we posted Kansas City minus three as the opening number. Mm -hmm. And as John and I discussed, it wasn't our finest work. I can't remember being that far off a number in a high profile game um, ever. And to see that line go from minus three all the way up to two and a half on the other side just couldn't imagine we'd be that far off but it did and there's certain reasons for it obviously Mahomes injury is a big part of that so we were watching him practice and I, I told I was talking to Kansas City Star and saying hey you know this this line is going to be moving based off what everybody sees in practice mm -hmm. and sure enough you know, we start seeing clips. Right, just like uh, I want to play for you guys. running here. down the field here. Now he's just jogging. Yep. Okay, but he's certainly not n n limping. Right. Right. He, does, one. Huh? he, he doesn't. He looks good. Yeah, he looks fine. But again, it, here it is. It's Wednesday. And, uh, but I truly believe that those numbers moved when it fell from two and a half. Somebody saw Mahomes jogging across the field or right. something like that and saying, okay, he might not be 100%. But he's certainly not, you know, fifty or sixty percent. This is going to be like the classic pros versus Joe's game, John. Like the kids are, the public is all over the Bengals, and the wise guys are going to bet Kansas City. That doesn't mean that Kansas City is going to win, but that's how this game is going to be bet. That's how it's already being bet. All the all the public players are on Cincy, 
And we're seeing sharp guys in Nevada, in New Jersey, in Colorado, all taking Kansas City. Yeah, I, I think out of the, I mean, obviously we saw that out of the gate, but I'm starting to feel like some people are liking Kansas City. I mean, some of the public play. Okay. So, it, as you know, came they came out of the gate, it was an avalanche of Cincinnati oh money. I mean, just every ticket uh, yes. on the Bengals. But, you know, after maybe, maybe the public saw the video, maybe the public saw some reports, whatever it is, but they're starting to back away a little bit from the Bengals. So I'm not sure if it's going to be the general public anyway going to be a hundred percent on the on Cincinnati. So this was the way I wanted to frame it for our audience because I, I like I said I think this conversation around this game is fascinating, right? I will ask you guys before the first snap of the weekend on a neutral field, Buffalo and Kansas City power rating was what? And Buffalo, I, I, Buffalo would have been a small favorite, small, like what one and a half ish, yeah. something like that. So the reason why I bring up Buffalo is Cincinnati was in Buffalo catching six points by the betting market mm-hmm. just this mm-hmm. last weekend. And yet now, right, we get to this week where that number peaks at Cincinnati minus two and a half on the road against a similarly rated opponent. And so I'm framing it for audience that perspective because it gives you an idea of how wild that swing is. As somebody who has a future on Cincinnati who believes they are the best team, that is a massive overcorrection by a market that seems to has they've slept on the Bengals all year long, right? Like they've covered yeah. like 72 percent of their games. They were undervalued going into that Buffalo game. But now to your guys' point, when you talk about, like again, to use the phrase, everybody and their mother, everyone and their mother sees the Bengals go on the road and take on the darling Bills and smack them around, and then the ankle injury uh, happens, and you get this overcorrection, right? It's a, it's a week-to-week league, man. Yep. I mean, Cincinnati should have lost to Baltimore in the wild card game. If Huntley doesn't reach for the end zone from the two-yard line, the, we're, we're looking at a Ravens-Chiefs game and a Jaguars-Bills game last weekend. Yep. So be careful. getting You're getting a little carried away there with Cincinnati. They played amazing on Sunday. They they punched Buffalo in the mouth right at the beginning of the game, and Buffalo never got up. I mean, that was an incredible performance. But the Bengals are lucky to even be in that game. They should have lost to Baltimore yeah. with a backup quarterback in there. I, I think people are getting a little carried away with the Bengals, and I do think the public is going to be all over them as we get closer to the game. Yep. So where does this – you guys are back at pick. I would assume that this closes – I'll take a guess, like Chiefs minus one and a half or two, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, Chiefs yep. are close favorite. So we're already back to pick, yep. right? After uh, peaking at uh, Cincinnati minus two and a half. Like I said, we, we had minus three. That was our opening number. We knew the injury report. We right. knew what Mahomes was going through. We saw the performance by the Bengals in Buffalo. We saw all that. And so what, from going from minus three to two and a half on the other side in you know a day and a half, right. it's just it's baffling. So certainly overcorrection <laughs> by yeah. not only just some of the general public, but we also saw some bigger plays early uh, on uh, Cincinnati. And now it's kind of coming back to the number that, you know, we are, you know, posted as the the opener. And now we're looking at maybe closing at one and a half and chiefs minus one and a half. And John, to your point about like, you know, week to week and what we like remember and what we don't, Mm -hmm. I I remember having conversations with multiple people that that offensive line for Cincinnati was going to be like the biggest thing in the world, Mm -hmm. right? It was the biggest weakness in the world. They weren't going to be able to overcome it. Those injuries are still there, and yet well, the market we, has forgotten about that we, as they go to Kansas City. We talked about that on Sunday. Yep. We really thought, it sounds funny, but we really thought the weather in Buffalo worked against the Bills. Those pass rushers couldn't get off the way they would have on, like, let's say, a turf field in the snow, and we think that really helped Cincinnati because they were banged up on the offensive front. They couldn't, ban- they couldn't block anybody against Baltimore. Now, I know Buffalo's defense is not Baltimore's defense. Mm-hmm. But it, I think it did hurt them a little bit. They couldn't get any traction in the snow there. In some ways, that worked to the Bengals' favor. The Bengals obviously deserved to win that game. They crushed the Bills. Yeah, on but Sunday. they were like running for eight yards a clip. Yeah, that, that second that, half, they were that, pulling them around. I'm telling you, yeah. that that's crazy. Because listen, was I, I drafted Mixon. Okay. <laughs> In fantasy I know. Football? I'm going to tell you. Were you the they, GM of the Cincinnati Bengals? Cincinnati. Bengals? Cincinnati. Fantasy or? Cinc- yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fantasy. fantasy. Yeah. yeah. A few years back. Cincinnati <laughs> hasn't ran the ball all season long. I'm telling you, they haven't ran the ball like that. And all of a sudden, they come in there with three backups and go up there and just push the Bills around. And I know the Bills don't have the greatest defense, but no. eight yards a clip, it was, I mean... I, that's what really surprised me. It was. It was very. It, what they did was really impressive, and it's it's a big reason why. Like, yeah, we're talking about Mahomes, but you're talking about an overcorrection in the line. It's because of how well the Bengals played <laughs> on Sunday. They played awesome in that game. By the way, so we talked like this is all because Mahomes is playing. With all this whole conversation, we've known the whole time that Mahomes still playing. Whatever the status of the ankle is, right. 
If one dinged up ankle for Mahomes is worth a seven point swing nearly, what is he worth if he actually didn't play in this game? We talked about that That's as good. well. We, you know, He's I heard good. some really bad numbers back there. By the way, when we talked, you want to name that. names? Someone, Anyone someone, in particular? You know, or numbers? I don't know, Philly back there. Uh, oh, okay. but, but then they understand that actually happens. came back to our number because uh, I heard seven Cincinnati seven. Okay. I was like, no, it's a little strong. That's yes, very <laughs> strong. I said, no, maybe four and a half, five. Jeremiah, like you that. think it should be more? Ten. <laughs> Chad Henney, Chad, Chad Henney, Henney, he led them off the goal line. That was a great drive. John, it was it only was. 98 yards. They were Relax. backed up inside. Yeah, they were inside the own five, right? That's a hell of a drive. Seven. I think, uh, I think Andy Reid and the play calling for Kansas City is going to have to get creative in this game because Mahomes, a big part of his game, is improvising with his feet. He's going to be limited at least. But I just believe that Andy Reid is sure. going to be able to do that. I think he'll be able to come up with some creative plays, use the speed they have, Kelsey is as good of a tight end as I've ever seen in the league. When when I Kansas City wants to short have you know emphasize their short passing game, they can. Yes, and they got a lot of weapons that can do that, and I think that's what they're going to do. And they're going to limit his mobility. And Reed has all week to prepare for this quarterback that might be sixty or seventy percent. And um, mm-hmm. he's he's a great offensive mind, so he knows what he's dealing with. I, again, I don't think Cincinnati has a great defense. I think they're okay. Mm-hmm. But I think, um, you know, I, I was thinking that they were going to up this, uh, the, uh, play this uh, underdog role too. I don't know if that comes into play. I mean, some people think it does. I do. I think a little bit. I mean, they've been hamming it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, especially in today's world where, you know, sports gambling is a part of our world like it's never been. So to sit there and go, we're underdogs in our own house. I mean, yeah, I'd probably use that for for some motivation. You guys mentioned briefly, so the best Super Bowl for you would be Philadelphia, Kansas City. Liability on Cincinnati, like eh. yeah, futures wise. Okay, I think I mean, it, actually, either way in the NFC, be good for business. I mean, San Francisco would bring a big cr- big crowd here, but so would Philadelphia. Well, really, all the NFC teams that were left were going to be great for business. Yeah. We'll say this, that San Francisco, so far during the playoffs, I mean, especially the last quarter of the season, their fans have been showing up. Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Every Sunday. I mean, we I mentioned mean, that Raiders time. game, right? That yeah. Raiders game that was, was crazy. We for had you guys a bigger crowd in the book for Raiders Niners than we've had for any of the playoff games yeah. so far. Uh, the the Niners, they bring in the crowds. So yeah, there's there's no way they would be like a negative to have them in the Super Bowl in terms of business and sure. in terms of volume. Philadelphia would would travel too. Yeah. though. They're but, maniacs. Those Philadelphia people. No, I, I agree with you. I I but let's make the point that the the big game mm-hmm. right it sells itself. It right. doesn't really matter who's in the game. Yeah. It's a big event no matter what. So I want to hit uh, two things really quickly before we get you guys out of here because you're busy dudes. First off, uh, we'll mention to everybody listening, possible super matchups uh, are available. So Chiefs versus Eagles. Eagles are one-point favorite, total of 48.5. Bengals versus Eagles. Eagles are one-point favorite, total of 49. Chiefs versus 49ers, a one-point favorite, total of 47.5. And, and Bengals, 49ers, one-point favorite for the 49ers, total of 47.5. For people listening who want to bet these because we have house rule conversations all the time, if you bet on the matchup and it does not go down, let's say I bet Eagles, Bengals, but it's actually Chiefs and 49ers, rules are what? It's a simple question, but let our audience know. You, you get, get your money back. You get your money back. All right. Just want to put that out you there. Know you, you know what else? You know you'll get it's something. Fun. Right. You it's know what you fun. should be careful betting this week? Mm-hmm. And this happens every year. Jay knows this. If you bet on the 2024 Super Bowl, yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to wait until next year exactly. to cash your ticket. This happens every year. Every Take year. a look at your ticket. We have it up. We have the odds up to win Super Bowl 58, which is next February in Las Vegas. Well, you'll, if you bet that, you cannot cash it this it, February, folks. It is a valid point because you every have people, year. people come up and they'll go, they'll have the 2024 Super Bowl sheet in front of them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wait a minute, the 49ers are 12 to 1 to win the Super Bowl? I'll yeah, take I'll, it. I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's next year's Super Bowl. We had a guy. Uh, we had a guy that bet the Broncos to win the next year's Super Bowl, the year they beat Carolina, mm. and he took us to gaming mm. because we said, "Well, you have a ticket for next year's Super Bowl." I publicly apologize for that. That was Jonathan Von. No, no. It was, uh, Van. Van. Yeah. No, it, but that that really does happen. We so it used to be if we saw somebody bet that, we'd have one of our guys in the back go out there and talk to the customer. But now over eighty percent of the bets are on the app. Yep. So you see people bet, and you're like, oh, boy, I hope that guy knows what he's doing. Mm. And the uh, the last thing I want to hit on with you guys, it can be a quick answer. What's the plan with props? When do you guys usually come up with Super Bowl props? 
right after uh, the guys will get together for about three days, uh, get them all out, we should have them on the board, all right, by late afternoon, early evening on Thursday. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And then the sheets, hopefully the sheets will be out Lovely. later that night. Uh, but we'll definitely have the sheets by Friday. But if they come in, if you come in real late on Thursday night, we should have all the prop sheets available. Have then. you considered my prop that I pitched to you the other day? What was it? Uh, I pitched it to Jay. It was a Willie team convert a fourth down in their own territory. I love yep. it. That's beautiful. But what if the, let me just ask you something. If the guy is, the, let's say they're punting, right? They're mm -hmm. punting from their own 35 and it's a fake punt. That's converting a fourth down. Okay. Is it converting or okay? It's converting. Yeah, I, think, I, think yeah. the, I, okay. I think so. What right. if the what if the play starts at the on the fifty yard line? Then it doesn't count, right? Because it started on the fifty. Oh, you're going to the gaming case. You're going to the Nevada gaming case on mm -hmm. that, John. Why? Yeah. It's not their own territory. It's specified. Oh, I'm not oh, going. Good luck, man. Good luck. You don't think anybody would dispute that? Well, oh, of course it. they would, but they would lose. Well, somebody still has to go through the motions to go into the case. I'll, I'll be your rep. I'll rep for you. <laughs> That's what we I said. don't even think it works like that. It's down on Washington Street. Like, go this ahead. is our lawyer, Jonathan Van Tobel. He'll I, take care of everything. Well, set, I got an idea. We'll call Von Mike. Van Tobel is a good lawyer name. They would take yeah, me is. seriously. We're going to call in Mike Rigg. We'll fly him in from Denver. We'll have him go to the gaming case. Mm -hmm. Problem solved. All right, cool. So you'll put it up. Yes, sir. All right. I like it. Uh, I was told. I forgot. Big ticket. Anything worth mentioning before we get out of here? We just looked that up, but we forgot. We we did take seventy grand <laughs> on the uh, Bengals, right? Was yeah, that early? Yeah, some guy bet seventy grand on the Bengals. Some, yeah. some guy just now bet fifteen grand on the Eagles winning mm -hmm. the Super Bowl. Uh, we got a lot of room to work with the Eagles. Yeah, plus two sixty, I think. We got a lot of room to work there because we win a lot yeah. of the money on the Eagles. Because again, I don't know if I said this earlier in the show, we have a homer back there booking these things. <laughs> if I wasn't clear about that. And we always do really well on Philadelphia. Doesn't work out too well in the NBA, but it's worked out pretty well for us in a couple other sports because Philadelphia is a great 70, sports town. They're a great sports town. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Uh, well, all right. I, I hope they do do it, John. It'd be nice. We can maybe get back the money we lost the last five years. <laughs> These, uh, I think yeah, you got good things coming for you. Clipper 76ers uh, final. So you're hearing <laughs> your first. All right. Make sure to come see us at the Superbook of the Westgate, Las Vegas. That's where we record. A Lodge Casino in Blackhawk, Colorado, or the newly added Taft's Ale House in Cincinnati. And, of course, we'll be here all weekend showing all the biggest college basketball matchups, NBA matchups, and, of course, the conference championship games. Follow us on social at Superbook Sports at Superbook.com. Stay on top of all the latest odds and promotions. We'll talk to you next week.